Don't you guys remember the good old days when civil rights infringing legislation came with fun names that we could all get behind? Patriot Act? Well, I do love patriotism. You got my vote. Now going in the exact opposite direction, enter the Restrict Act. An act that definitely could have undergone one more review sesh from the neocon sales team. Now this one, it's not squeaking by on charisma. Now before we get into the meat of this episode talking about what's actually in the bill, I feel like I gotta talk about the elephant in the room. Banning TikTok. That's why we're talking about this in the first place. Congress can't agree on whether to raise the debt ceiling and start paying bills again, but a 7 year old app has foreign ownership? <gasps> we gotta do some about that ASAP. Now passing the Restrict Act to get rid of TikTok is sort of like releasing snakes into your house to solve a rat problem. Sure, you can definitely fly that mission accomplished banner, but you're leaving quite the wake behind with that solution. Now the most significant thing the Restrict Act actually does is tinker with the balance of power between Congress and the executive branch. Now if you watch my coverage of the Supreme Court much, you've probably heard me talk recently about the blank check bills that Congress occasionally passes where they basically throw up their hands and say, hey executive branch, here's a whole lot of authority, be more responsible than we would be. Now this, well it's sort of one of those blank check bills. Hey Mr. President, if you want to restrict apps from foreign owned countries, well we as Congress are going to shift that power over to you. Now if you have faith in our current president and every president who's going to come after him to make good choices in this area, well this bill is for you. If on the other hand, you could imagine any potential problems surrounding giving the president carte blanche access to remove foreign apps, well stick around because this episode's for you. For example, huh, it says right here that the leading Republican presidential candidate right now owns a controlling stake in a social media company, True Social. Couldn't see a conflict of interest emerging there. So let's look a little deeper because there are layers of nuance to be pulled back here. Now in general, while the president eats his food, Congress more pushes it around the plate and makes it look like progress is slowly being made. I mean, even the solution to this problem is, let's empower someone else to do something. This passing the buck really is alarming people because it centralizes this pretty large power in the hands of one person and the people they choose for their cabinet. So now that we're into the nuance section a bit, this power, well it wouldn't technically fall onto the hands of the president. See, the president appoints a secretary of commerce, an unelected bureaucrat who generally requires congressional approval. Now a few years ago I would have said they require congressional approval, but Trump started putting in a bunch of unapproved acting secretaries and the jury is still literally out as to the extent of the power that acting secretaries have. So maybe you could have unapproved people doing this stuff. Now this commerce secretary would then put together a team where they would make recommendations to that team spanning from do nothing, block international investments to companies, or just straight up ban international apps or websites. Now then that council that they assembled would vote on whether to implement the recommendations of the secretary of commerce and then they would be implemented. See we're not giving this huge power to one guy, that would be crazy. No, we're giving power to him and his chosen friends. Much safer. Now there's one other major guardrail to prevent the worst case scenario that's probably popping into your head. This law only gives power over certain types of companies. This legislation lays out six enemy countries which if they control the company or they control the CEO of the company, the secretary can act against them. We're looking at you, China, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Russia, and Venezuela. If one of those countries does anything to your company, well, it might fall on this list of people that we can restrict access to. Now, all these things I'm saying right now might have you scratching your head because, well, TikTok is an international entity run by a Singaporean man. Is it Chinese enough to be considered Chinese? Well, yes because TikTok isn't a company, it's a subsidiary. 
Put simply, this is like debating whether iPhone is an American company. Well, Apple is. In this case, TikTok is owned by ByteDance, a company that is very much Chinese. Now, because of that specifically Chinese foreign ownership, to avoid potential executive branch legislation and regulation coming from the Restrict Act, they would have to dump their Chinese ownership, ByteDance, and get themselves back out there. Either get acquired from a company affiliated not with the big six bad countries I mentioned earlier, or just become an independent company headquartered outside of those six countries. Now that's largely what the Restrict Act does, but I gotta give an honorable, or in this case dishonorable, mention towards criminalizing access to banned materials. Now this is what some people are referring to as banning VPNs as well, or devices that you can use to make it look like your computer's in a foreign country. What? Me? American? No, no, no. The signal, it's coming from Canada. Now give me that Canadian TikTok. Now this legislation wouldn't criminalize VPNs themselves, but it would criminalize using VPNs or other methods to access foreign materials that were banned by the executive branch. So that's exactly how the Restrict Act proposed to deal with TikTok and the next TikTok after TikTok would work. Maybe some sort of fun personality test out of North Korea. What does your social security number say about you? Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell if you like what you saw and want freedom to continue to ring. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.